What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Before I get into the video, I do want to say thank you for all of the support. I've, as of today, the channel has 111 subscribers and 2,400 total views. And then the What is EDC video is at like 1.3 thousand views. So I'm not sure what happened, but it seemed to blow up and I got like 20 or so subscribers in like a day or something. So thank you so much for the support. And I will continue to make videos. Um, sorry for the big gap between this one and the last one. I just, I'm trying to think of ideas and they, I don't know. That I, it's kind of hard to think of video ideas and execute a good video. Like last week I was going to upload um, a Gerber Dime versus Leatherman Square PS4 video. Because uh, I just got the dime. But as soon as I got it, it was like really terrible. As I thought it would be because I had it before. So I cancel the video um but anyway today i'm going to be talking about the best budget edc items for 30 dollars or less um, these are all from my personal collection so some of the honorable mentions that you see in a lot of other videos um i will mention them but i won't actually have them but these are from my collection um and these are some of my favorite budget items they're cheap but um they're definitely really good so the first category would be knives and this is the hardest to find something good because 30 bucks is not much wiggle room for knives um most of my knives are i mean i have the cheapest knife i have is 30 bucks when you go above that you have like 50 to you know 200 dollars. so um i don't have many knives but i would say the absolute best knife for 30 bucks or less is the qsp penguin this knife is, there's two versions. This is the D2 version. The S35 is twice the price. It's 60, but I mean, still 60 bucks for S35 VN. My Carta handles and really, really good QC, um, at least in my situation is steel. Uh, this knife was out of stock a lot. I mean, obviously there's people were just buying it as soon as it came in stock and I was able to get it. And, um, yeah, it's like, it's really, really awesome. There is no blade play at all. Perfect centering, if you can see there. And um, I mean, D2 is a little harder to sharpen, but I mean, it's pretty sharp. Um, there is an uneven grind. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there at the near the tip and here i mean it doesn't really matter at all i mean benchmade still does it um didn't bother me in a knife at this price but the action is super good it runs on uh washers they say they use copper washers and there's like a teflon washer on top so i'm not sure if you can see that these are the the washers are right there well, there's actually another teflon washer on top of each one that touches the blade so it does like it doesn't totally drop shut but the action is pretty good so yeah out of the box very good knife i had to i un, i uh was gonna open it and clean it out but i took out the the pivot screw and this are all uh i think these are all t6 which is one downside and i'll get to that but i took this out and then i tried to take apart the rest of the knife but then obviously since they're t6 they're very prone to stripping and they're kind of soft so i did end up these were i think already stripped or from the factory or deformed or maybe i did it so i couldn't get it apart um but the after i loosened the pivot a little bit the, the action became really good and yeah so really good knife qsp actually sent me extra screws because i told them that this uh these stripped I still haven't opened it though, and it's fine. And uh, this right here, they usually have two screws just like sitting here, I guess, because it'd be symmetrical. I took, and as soon as I took it out, it actually helped the action a lot. So, and it doesn't need to be there. So it actually, I think it looks better and it can, I guess, take a little bit of the weight. It's not, it's like, it doesn't weigh anything, but yeah. So this is the best knife, I think, for 30 bucks or less for main folding primary knife. Okay, next knife that I have that's $30 or less is the CRKT Folds Minimalist. This is the Tonto Blade. I got this a long time ago, but they still make them now in a bunch of different shapes. There's, um, they make Warncliffe, Bowie, 
uh, even a cleaver blade. These are about, I think, $25, and you can use it as a neck knife. Um, and it has 5 CR15 MOV steel. The ergonomics are pretty good. You get three finger grips right here, and then the lanyard's kind of like for that your pinky to grab onto. Um, pretty, pretty nice. And I personally, I got this a long time ago when I was first getting into knives. I liked how it looked, but I didn't think about how much more annoying this is to sharpen than like a normal um, draw point or like that kind of blade style because it has a little curve here and then it has another another edge. So it's kind of kind of annoying to sharpen. That's one thing I don't like about this particular one. But this is a really good knife. The only problem as well is if you can't carry fixed blades, like in California here, you can't carry fixed blades. Um, I don't think you can. So one thing to look out for. And next, these are really good knives, the Oppenel knives. This is the number eight, and this is only like $17. Um, this is the stainless version. This, when you see inox here, that means stainless. Uh, it doesn't have it, and that's the carbon steel one, um, which is not stainless. It has a collar lock, so you can rotate this and lock it closed. And the same goes for when it's open. You can lock it open. So I want to go to a little more. So it won't close. And I got this knife um, just for using on food, for food prep. So yeah, but I mean, obviously this is not really a one hand opening pocket clip knife, but it's still a nice knife for the price point, for sure. Now, this knife is $35, so technically it's not $30 or less, but the company here, CJRB, makes really good knives for um, pretty budget prices. They have this knife, they have the Feldspar, the Crag, a bunch of knives that are all like um, folders on bearings with D2 steel. And uh, this knife actually uses the proprietary steel, which is AR RPM 9. And it's similar to D2. I think it's a little bit more stainless. Um, but this this knife is pretty good for the price. I got it for free from them when I had some issues with the, the Feldspar. Some QC issues, like back to back to back. So they just gave this to me. Um, and this is designed by Swags, who's like a knife YouTuber. And this is a pretty cool knife. It has a lot of fidget factor. You have the thumb stud here. You have this the front flipper you can use with your thumb, which is really useful if you have like gloves on and you don't have the dexterity to open, use the thumb stud. Um, it is pretty small though. Like I, I mean, my fingers aren't my hands aren't super big, so I can get a full grip. But I mean, it's a it's a, it can fit in your fifth pocket in your jeans. Like the the penguin is like a seven inch knife. This is much smaller. Um, pretty cool blade shape too. On this knife um, and I didn't had no blade play perfect centering out of the box uh, didn't need to make any adjustments and um, yeah nice g10 handles little pocket clip and I think it's a super nice knife technically it's out of the budget um, but you can find these knives like if they go on sale or like a knife swap used pretty good knives so these and Civivi too like the the cheaper Civivis are really nice too uh, I don't have any other Civivis other than the Elementum which I would say the Elementum for 50 bucks is the best knife for 50 bucks or less um some other ones I can mention uh would be definitely the Ontario Rat the Rat 1 or Rat 2 those are really good whether they're an OS 8 or D2 D2 is gonna be more expensive but OS 8 Rat super good knife um I've handled one before, they have, that one had no play, like really good action, four-way pocket clip. The only thing I don't like about it is it's pretty ugly. Um, that's the main thing that stopped me from getting one, but they're pretty good beater knives if you want. Um, some other knives in this price point, uh, these can also be like, considered multi-tools, I guess. You can carry them with the primary folder. So I'll, they'll show up twice in the video. Um, are Swiss Army knives. So some Swiss Army knives here. 
these are pretty common. Um, so these are 91 millimeter, 84 millimeter, and 58. These are the Climber, Tinker, Alox Cadet, and the Classic SD. So Classic SD is like $17. You see these everywhere. These are $17 new. You can get them on eBay or whatever for even cheaper. You know, basic kind of like keychain size knife. This wouldn't be your main folder. You had nail file, flathead, little blade, scissors. And Victorinox scissors are the best in multi-tools by far. Not even close to anything else. Even the 58 millimeter scissors are really, really good. And then the toothpick and tweezers. So this is, I mean, I like to have, if I have a knife, I want to have a multi-tool. Oops. If I'm going to have a multi-tool, I want to have scissors with it. Because scissors can do things that knives can't do. Um, it'd be redundant to me to have two blades. Like, I don't need two blades, but having scissors is definitely, definitely useful. Um, next, this is probably the most expensive out of all of them. Uh, this is like 28 bucks on Amazon. This is a Cadet. Very thin and a little bit shorter than the 91 millimeter. Um, no tools in the back here. It just has the blade, the standard opening layer. You know, the bottle opener, can opener, screwdrivers. And then this one has the nail file and the nail cleaner. So, a couple other Alox models. There's the Pioneer, which is the same, except it has an awl. Um, Pioneer X, which has that, and then scissors. X is for scissors. And then the Electrician, which has... I think it replaces this with a, like, kind of sheep's foot electrician's blade. And it has... I think an all here. So these are cool. They're very, very slim. Um, again, I don't know. It could be your main knife if this, you're doing very light duty tasks. Same applies to both of these. Uh, this is the Tinker. You know, same deal here. You got the main blade, the pen blade, and then the same opening layer. And then on the back, you got a full 3D Phillips, and then the awl. So, and of course, the toothpick and tweezers. So these are like $23, I think. And the climber, I'm actually not sure if this is below 30. It should be below 30, I think. If it's not, then I apologize. Um, but the reason I have this here is because this has the scissors. The 91 millimeter Torinox scissors are probably the best multi-tool scissors. And they come on pretty cheap knives too. So having this in conjunction with all the other tools. And the only difference here is that when the knives have scissors, they have the hook and they have the corkscrew. It doesn't come with this. I put this on myself. This is just a little mini eyeglass screwdriver. But you put this with your main knife and you have like extra blades if you want to like you can use one for food you could just use these for like smaller you know more intricate tasks or for stuff you don't want to get your main knife messed with like you, if you want to cut a bunch of like gross tape or something then you can use these for those so that's what i would use these with army knives as so very very good budget tools and uh, extremely good. The, obviously, the steel is you know not crazy. It's pretty soft steel. You can sharpen it really easily, and it's very, they're very stainless. But the QC is very good. The warranty is good. The warranty sometimes you can send it back, and they won't really do anything to it. That's happened to me a couple times. But generally, Victorinox is like my favorite knife company. So those are the knives. Um, the last thing I would, oops, the last thing I would mention would be something like this. This is the Gerber Pribert X. This is like the smaller, this uses a number 11 X-Acto blades. They have a larger version, which uses the normal utility blades. And um, like I would, again, sometimes I've carried this as my only knife. Uh, this is obviously a pretty small blade, but it's good. This is what you use utility knives for, for cutting stuff that you don't want to mess your normal blade up on so yeah like a bunch of boxes cardboard tape stuff like that 
you have a pry bar here so you don't, you know, you have something to pry with because never use your knife to pry. And um, a little bottle opener too. This one has some cool paracord. I like how this looks. Um, and this is like aluminum too. So it's, it's not G10 like the other one. Uh, they try to call these screwdrivers. That's a bit of a stretch. So I wouldn't really say those are screwdrivers, but this is uh, like $23. So pretty good as well. And if you, I mean, that is pretty expensive for what it is as a utility knife. You can also buy cheap ones like these. This is the Work Pro utility knife. You can get three of these for 15 bucks. These are standard blades. Even has a pocket clip here. So it's a myriad of utility knives you can buy. They can be up to like $80 if you get titanium ones. But if you really want to be cheap, you can just carry these or have this addition to a nicer knife. So also a good idea. And if, I mean, these are really easy to sharpen. They're just, they're very soft steel. But if you're, you know, you mess, mess it up, you chip it, whatever, you can just take it out, turn it around, if you mess up both sides, you can just get another one and put it in. So that's it for knives. Um, the next category is flashlights. Flashlights are easier to shop for in the budget range. Um, for under 30 bucks, the ones I have that are really nice, I like. Um, the first would be the Streamlight micro stream series there is a triple a and a usb version the usb version is sometimes over 30 dollars on amazon i saw it for there's i saw it at 30 dollars 32 dollars 26 dollars on sale but it's around there and then the triple a version is um like 20 dollars 18 dollars 20 dollars so the triple a is just one mode 45 lumens and then the USB is 50 lumens, and then you double tap for 250. Yeah, you can't really tell here, but um, yeah, this has two modes. And the every color, except for the Coyote Tan color, it goes low to high. The Coyote color goes high to low. So for EDC, I would definitely recommend low to high. That's what I prefer. And the only difference here, yeah, this has the USB charging port, micro USB. And this one, so it's a little longer, but I like them. Clips are nice. The button is a little hard to press. People say what I found was good is first, the button will break in over time. And second, um, if you get like an old gift card or something and you punch a hole out of it, you can just put that little piece in between the button. If you take off the, like unscrew here, you take off, you take off the button, you put it in between the button and the switch and it makes it a little easier to press. There's something in between it. That's what I did on both of these, but these are really nice. Um, and the form factor is my favorite part. Very slim and small. And the run times aren't insane. I've had this one since, I think, October on the same AAA that came with it, and it still works. And it only supposed to run for two and a quarter hours, so it's they're pretty good. Um, I will say that this is more of a floody light on the USB. You honestly can't tell here, but this definitely has more of a spot spotlight on this one. Okay, the next flashlight is the Nightcore Tiki. Basically, their take on the Roby Von Aurora series, so they are cheaper. This is the Tiki Glow in the Dark, which is $25. Bucks. The normal Tiki and Tiki LE are $20. I have mine on a necklace, so it's easy to wear around your neck. So it's, if you want to do hands-free operation, it comes with this little quick-release thing. Um, but it's a micro-USB rechargeable light, and they're... Also, our side emitters in the light. So the LE version has a blue and red side emitter, and then the other versions have a white and a, and a UV side emitter. The white is a high CRI emitter as well. Um, the glow in the dark, obviously, they will glow in the dark after they've been they've used a side light or you shine another light on it. Um, it's either blue or green. So I don't know if I can get this to glow in the dark. Yeah, so you can already see. It will glow. So this is, there's a bit of delay. So there's a momentary on, you wait, and then it's 300 lumens. You double tap and there's one lumen, 15, 40, and the 300, you, and you hold the turn off. If you want to use the side emitters, you triple click. You have the ultraviolet one. You click again, the high CRI, white, and then you click again, and it does the flashing beacon mode. 
So the, the run times are actually pretty decent on this. And it's pretty useful if you want to wear it on your neck, if you want to use it as a hands-free emitter with a side thing or like a beacon to sh to, if you're at night and want to show people where you are. So that's a good, another light. You also put in your keychain, and this is another good keychain light, which is the Olight i1R2 EOS. Um, micro USB rechargeable, uh, five lumens and 150. So I just keep this on my keys, pretty beat up. Um, but it's definitely, I don't know, five lumens is good for if you're in the dark, but for everyday tasks, I think anywhere from 30 to 50 lumens is pretty good. And then if you're like, if it's nighttime, you probably want something, um, more substantial around 200, 300. Um, so I like to have a light that can like go through like a moonlight mode and like a mid and like a high. So like the lumens on this are actually pretty good. One is good, one to five lumens. And then you got like a 15 lumen, 15 and 60 is good. And then 300 for the, if you really want that turbo. Um, and the last two lights I'm gonna mention here are the Lumen Top EDC-01. EDC-01 and EDC-02. Same exact light. Um, this is just a newer one that came out this year. It comes with this, comes with a pocket clip. The other one doesn't have one. This is, pocket clip is from a different light. I took it off from the UltraTag K18, uh, which had a problem. It, it was defective. It actually would drain your batteries when not in use. So yeah, it's pretty bad. But um, this can come off and it, it's just, it, it sucks because if you want to use, it is magnetic. So this on a, on its own is magnetic, but if you want to stick it to something, you can take this off and it'll be flat. But what the problem is, is that this piece keeps the clip on. So it sucks. I want, I like to have a flat cap with the clip. Um, they do come with little diffusers, but it takes one disposable AAA. You have low, which is five lumens and it goes straight to high, which is 120. And then medium is, uh, 32 i think so i don't like the high the low high medium i don't know why they do that but other than that these are very cheap this is ten dollars and this is 12 or 13 dollars so very good lights for the price and the last light is the lumen top tool double a this is um you can get it with or without the 14500 um so it's anywhere from i think 17 to 30 dollars 20 to 30 dollars and yeah, it can, it goes up to 650 lumens. You have a bunch of modes, you have strobe. Um, I don't like that the tail cap is always lit because it can drain your battery. But what's cool about this light is that it can take alkalines, alkaline double A's, 14500s, and rechargeable double A batteries. So that's what's really versatile about this light. Um, pocket clip is not so good, but yeah, for the price, good light. Now the next category is pens. So pens are, unless you're getting into insane, you know, tactile turn stuff, your pens are pretty easy to find for under 30 bucks. Um, I have a few pens here that are pretty good for EDC. This, you know, the usual Zebra F701, it's like $6. You can put the Fisher refill in it. Everyone knows about that. Parker Jotter, another good classic. It's like 12 bucks. This is a really old one. Actually, this one's made in USA. It's a really old one I have. But um, yeah, these are good pens. Uh, they take like Parker style refills, obviously. So like you can put a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 in here. Um, I have the Parker Queen Flow. Pretty good. Um, this is a Zebra Sarasa Grand, which uh, actually looks like this when you get it. I have another one. So it has this clip when you get it. Now, some people don't like this clip. It's pretty ugly. It's okay. I think it looks unique, but I like the way this looks much better. This is a clip from a Zebra F402. And you have to take it off and pull it. It's kind of hard. They're threaded on with these pliers and stuff. I ended up scratching it. But, um... Yeah, I put that on, looks pretty nice. And I put the Uni uh, Jetstream refill in here, 1.0. So it's a ballpoint instead of a gel. It writes really, really well. 
and this is a metal body. Um, that is the refill that comes from this pen. This is the Uni Jetstream RT. Also another good EDC pen, but this rubber here, when you try to clip it to something, it makes it really, really sticky. So I don't like clipping it. Lastly, I have the Fisher Space Pen Bullet, $25. Everyone knows about these. Oh, and this is like $10, $10. And the F402 is like seven for two dollars so yeah um this is the skillcraft b3 aviator so this is like my newest pen i actually really like it it's a multi-pen so it takes is a ballpoint red black and then a 5.5 millimeter pencil and an eraser so they make a different a couple different versions with uh blue and black ink and stylus tip but this is like 20 20 bucks on Amazon, $22. You can find it on eBay for cheaper. And uh, it takes standard D1 refills. So if you want to put, you can put whatever refills you want in there. So those are really good EDC pens um, for under 30 bucks. If you want, you can also use an Energel alloy from Pentel. Uh, this, I use it with gel ink. I don't recommend gelling for EDC. I think ballpoint is definitely the best for EDC because it writes on more surfaces especially like receipts and stuff if you want to sign those gel doesn't do too well on receipt paper and if, if you want you can honestly just carry like just super cheap pens like you could literally just carry a big crystal it's like 10 of them for a dollar 50 on amazon like it doesn't really matter you don't need pressurized pens or luxury pens or whatever honestly um for wallets i have only a couple wallets i got the Chum Surf Short Wallet, really nice wallet for ten bucks. Um, usually comes with a key ring here if you want to attach keys to it. You got a slip pocket in the front, one pocket here, and a pocket here with uh, division. So cash cards, whatever. This is the ID. It comes with pretty cool. Um, bunch of colors, uh, pretty durable to me. Some people say there's, it's all. Like, this broke and stuff, but mine is pretty good. So you can carry, like, you can put, like, EDC gear in the front or some in this pocket. Or whatever. I used to do that. So you can also carry some extra stuff. Um, then there's these kind of RFID front pocket wallets. Slim wallets. This is my ID I drew. <laughs> um, on Amazon, you can try and, like, travel them over 10 bucks. This one I found. This is a Chelman wallet. I found this for like $3. That is probably the best wallet you can get for the money for $3. There's like three pockets here, pocket here for cash in the middle, and then a pocket here, and then some ID here. Don't know if this is actually RFID blocking. I don't really care, but this is probably the best item for like dollar to quality ratio. Okay, and aside from that, you can use like an elastic band. You can use uh, the VanQuest like pocket quiver. You can use the back of that. Um, I don't have it with me, but you can use the back of that. Like any pocket organizer, but there's a wallet, like a slot in the back. Um, and the next category is multi-tools. So I already showed you, you can have these as multi-tools. Um, the Leatherman Micra, which is right here. This is $30, and it's pretty good. It's kind of hit or miss on the scissors, and you can't really sharpen them that easily. They don't open all the way. Um, I had one that literally wouldn't cut anything. Some of them do. This one's okay. Still not as good as full-size Victorinox scissors at all. But, you know, it's 30 bucks. You can find them for really cheap on eBay. You got tweezers. These are okay tweezers, but you have a little... This is for Phillips head. Cab lifter, tiny flathead, clip point blade, nail cleaner, nail, nail filer, nail cleaner, and then a little flathead. So, not bad. And it has a little ruler, too. This is in the style of, like, the old, like, the rebar or the PST, like, those style tools. And, um, I mean, yeah, for pocket multi-tools, definitely, like, this is probably the best value. They have more expensive ones like the mini champ or the manager and stuff. Um, but I think something like this is 
pretty good. You're not going to really find many pliers-based multi-tools for $30 or less. Um, there is the Leatherman Rev, which is $30. Bucks. You can find used Wingman Sidekick. I don't personally like those, so I think they're pretty bad quality. But, you know, with 30 bucks, like, what are you going to do, right? And lastly, we have the miscellaneous category. This is a bunch of different stuff. Um, so, I guess for keys organization, I have this on my keys, which is a Night Eyes Doohickey. Doohickey Plus. It's just like a little upgraded version. I have this on my keys because I just like to put my keys in my pocket. I don't really clip it to anything. I put it in my back pocket. When, when I'm standing up, and then when I go back to my car, I just take it out. Um, but I have this, so I have, like, you know, extra little tools. But also, if I want to clip my keys to something, clip with my bell loop, whatever, then I can use this, and it doubles as a tool. If you don't want to do that, you can use it, like, in a little S-beaner, right, like this. These are very useful for key organization. You can get a bigger size. This is the smallest size, number one. You can get a bigger size if you want. I uh, don't have too much stuff for keys. Um, I would recommend though getting a key ring that can open like this. Like I can just, you can just open it and then close it again. I have one of those or when you press down and it opens, so you don't like destroy your fingernails. Um, pouches, I mean, you can use, like, this is a Vanquist pouch, like 25 bucks. Um, I actually go to the store called Daiso Japan, which is everything's like a dollar fifty minimum. Um, very, very cheap stuff, and it's good. Like, I have a bunch of stuff from that store. Like, I can make another video on this. I have an insane amount of pouches. Like, you got this, you got, you know, this kind of pouch. And they're pretty good, especially for the price. Like, it's a steal. You know, $1. fifty for those pouches. And you have, I have, like, this whole thing full of just pouches from the store. I'll make a separate video on that. Um, because yeah, that's sort of a bunch of good stuff for EDC. And I can use those to like make as modules to organize my backpack or whatever. Um, and this pouch is cool too. It's a little Griffin earbud pouch. You, wanna, you can fit like um, these size items in it. You can fit that. You can fit. Um, you can fit a flat little flashlights like these. You can fit this. And you can fit mini Bic. And again, Bic lighters are pretty good too to have full size or mini. Another item. Um, power banks are also really useful. This one is like, it's 10,000 milliamp hours and it's like $13. Um, notebooks, I mean, field notes. Notebooks you don't have to go too crazy on, like, super expensive stuff um handkerchiefs are good too uh and also i would recommend for like ten dollars you can get a good pepper spray um it's illegal everywhere you know you don't have to worry about gun laws and stuff so this is good to have as well and if you want to sharpen your stuff i recommend this is a Knives Plus drop block, it's like $25. And then the Sharp Maker's out of the budget here. I think this is a good alternative that you can take with you as well. Worksharp Guided Field Sharpener, 30 bucks. Another thing I forgot to mention is for maintenance, you can also get KPL or whatever lube you need, which is like $13, 15 bucks. And then one of these or whatever handle you need for quarter inch bits, this is like 12 bucks and then the bits themselves my set was like nine to ten dollars so that's also really good for helping keep maintenance of your knives and yeah that's it like it's a bunch of good budget stuff um there's some great tools and accessories for edcs in my collection and um obviously the honorable mentions that i don't own um but edc doesn't really need to be expensive it's it doesn't need to be an expensive hobby. Um, it's just what you need to get your tasks done throughout the day. I mean, it can definitely get out of control, that's for sure. I mean, I would know but with the, the spending and stuff. But, I mean, I hope these items showed you some good budget items and that, you know, they, they're dependable, but they won't break the bank. And thank you for watching. Stay safe.